Hello, it's Chris here, back for another lesson on connecting an iOS app to a MySQL database. In the previous lesson, we had set up said database through our web host here, and we had created a database user and assigned it to the database. So we also added some data to that database. Um, now we are going to create the PHP web service, um, and we're going to put it on the web host so that we can access it and it's gonna query that database for the data and return it as JSON. So here's an example of what it's going to look like. This is the domain that I signed up for, iosquiz.com slash, and then I had, uh, I named it service.php. So you can see here when I hit this URL, as you can hit the URL right now in your browser, you're going to get back our data. So if you're not familiar with JSON, uh, these are basically key value pairs. So you see the squiggly bracket here, it might be hard to see, but that would be you know one row of data, and this would be translated into, when we parse it into our Swift, it would be a dictionary with uh, a name key, and the value would be Apple, an address key, and the value of that would be this address, a latitude key, and then you know so on and so forth. And then you have a comma here, and this would be represented as another dictionary. Um, and then the outer two brackets, these square brackets, that represents an array. So when we actually parse um, this JSON into our uh, Swift code, we're going to have an array of two dictionaries. And inside those two dictionaries, it's going to be these key value pairs. So let's take a look at the PHP code um, that is running behind the scenes to produce this. We go back to my blog article here. Now, I'm going to walk through this PHP code here. It's been a while since I wrote this, so there might be better ways of doing things now, and I would welcome any feedback if you are very familiar with PHP. So this code is just going to go into uh, a standard text editor, and you're just going to save it as a file with the extension .php. And when you upload it, onto our web host, it's going to run that file as PHP. Now here's the opening uh, tag for the PHP code, and here's the closing tag. So anything in between these two tags, um, that's our PHP code. And these green lines are comments, just like when we write Swift code. And variables in PHP have this dollar sign in front of it. So we have this con variable here, and what we're doing is using this MySQL I connect function to open a connection to the database. And we're assigning it to this variable here because later on we're going to need to close it. So we do need a reference to that connection. Here in this if statement, we are just checking if there was an error in opening the connection. And if there was, this echo command is kind of like the print statement in Swift where it would just uh, output that onto the screen. Now, before we move on, I'd just like to talk a little bit about this statement here because uh, in this MySQI connect function, we are going to have to specify several parameters. Localhost is the address of the database. And because our PHP web service and the database is, are going to be on the same server, uh, localhost just refers to the server that it's on. Now, username is going to be the database username password is going to be that database user's password and db name you're going to replace that with the actual name of the database that you want it to access now although we do have to put in the actual credentials here in the form of text it's not that anybody can actually just uh, take a look at the code behind it like if you went view source on this guy, you wouldn't be able to see the source code like you could with HTML. And it's not like you can download this file and open it up and, you know, take a look at the um, credentials. So it's not unsafe like that, but there are other best practices that we can do to make it safer. For instance, one easy thing is that right here, I don't have an uh, SSL certificate for this web service. So you know, it would be more secure if we access this through HTTPS. Um, so that's one thing. But the other thing also is that if you were building kind of a full-fledged 
uh, API with lots of different web service calls to the database to you know create rows and insert data, update data, delete data, whatever, you probably wouldn't want to um, have these hard-coded credentials in every single uh, web service file. So I did a little bit of research and this article actually has a lot of uh, good points for best practices in using that MySQL I connect statement here. Uh, one of the things that I can just point out is that we can um, actually make that connection in another file, in another PHP file, and then from our web service here, instead of you know directly hard coding the code here, we just uh, make a link or make a reference to that other connection file. So let me show you what this person did here. So you can have this config any file, which actually contains the uh, credentials and the database information. And then from your web service, you can just um, have this parse any file, which reads in that information. And so what that's going to prevent is even if someone did end up being able to see your PHP code of your web service, they're only going to see things like this, where you reference the username and password from the config file, rather than seeing the actual values. So unfortunately, my PHP skills are still pretty much at a beginner level. And so I'm going to link, I'm going to put this link in the description of my video so you can read into it and you can apply these best practices if you are actually uh, creating this for a real app rather than just a demo. Uh, for what I've done here is pretty much what I call demo code. Another thing that this article uh, mentioned is that you want to escape the SQL query. What I mean by that is here we actually just have one hard-coded query, select everything from the locations table. But sometimes you're going to rely on the iOS app passing in some data to your web service and you're going to take that data and make your database call, right? For example, your iOS app may be looking for all the articles associated with the particular user. And so it would pass you that user ID and then you would take that user ID and then you would modify this SQL statement and say select, you know, all the articles of this user ID. However, there's something called a uh, SQL injection attack where uh, malicious users could, instead of passing you a user ID, pass you another uh, SQL statement. So if you just take that thinking that it's a user ID and then you, you know, you build it into your uh, SQL selection statement here, you may end up returning more information or returning different information than you intended to. So the attacker could potentially access data that they're not supposed to. So one way to uh, combat against that is to, um, before you take any data and just shove it into your SQL statement, you need to escape it, effectively treating that input as text and not actual uh, SQL statement. And if you're a web developer, you're probably familiar with that because any sort of text box which you can enter in data on a website, that could be subject to SQL injection attacks. So it's, it's pretty common to safeguard against this stuff. I read another article, which I'll also link to in the description, that was very interesting because it talked about different types of attacks that people could use to um, sort of expose or trick your web service, rather. Um, into returning data that it's not supposed to or running code that it's not supposed to. There's something called the man in the middle attack, uh, replay attack and stuff like that. And this article talked about different ways for uh, you to build a secure web service. So there's a lot to consider if you're going to be building uh, web services that connect to your MySQL database or any sort of database for that matter. So now I hope you can kind of understand why I would recommend a platform like Firebase or parse server or something like that for beginners who want to work with a backend. Because if you're just new to iOS and you're new to programming in general, you're just picking up Swift programming, it's picking up Xcode, the last thing you want to do is have to learn about another language um, and then how to build secure web service and stuff like that. 
um, using Firebase and Parse Server, it's very easy to get set up and running. And inside the iOS app you're building, if you're using the MVC design pattern correctly, it's going to be very easy for you to just swap in another data layer. Um, should you decide not to use Firebase or Parse Server in the future, you can you can change that without having to modify a lot of stuff in your app. But anyways, coming back to this, um, in this tutorial, in this video series, I'm showing you guys how to connect your iOS app to read data from my SQL database, right? So that's what we're going to do here. Let's go through the rest of this code here. This is another variable called SQL, and we're assigning it this string. This string is actually going to be the uh, SQL query that we run against the database. And like I mentioned before, it just selects all the rows from this locations table. And then uh, what we're doing here is we're running the query, we're passing in the connection that we opened earlier, we're passing in the SQL statement, which is right here. Um, and we're assigning results to this variable called result. And this if statement is just going to check if there were any results. Now, if it turns out that there are results stored in here, you know, we ran the statement and we got some rows of data back, then we're going to come in here. Um, I created two arrays, uh, one being result array and one being temp array. And then I loop through the result rows. And for each row, I'm using a while loop, for each row, I'm assigning that row into a temp array and then I'm pushing that into a result array. I'm basically uh, building up all the rows of data into result array. I'm not sure why I assigned row into temp array and then doing it this way rather than just putting this row in here. Can't remember if there was a reason why I wrote it this way, but essentially this while loop just goes through the results for each row of data that it got back. It's putting it into result array. And then finally, JSON and code is going to take the data in that result array and it's going to turn it into JSON and this echo statement again is like a print statement. So it's going to print that JSON code out to the screen like you see here. Um, and then finally we close that database connection. So if we simply just take this code and we're going to copy it and I'm just going to paste it into a text file and obviously you're going to change username, password, and DB name uh, to the proper things. Let me show you where you would see that. In the C panel, you would click MySQL database. And then your database name would be this guy. And so that's what you would put in DB name. And this would be your database user's name. So you would put that in the username and password, you would just put whatever password you assign that guy. And then you would save this file. And by default, my text editor is trying to save it as an HTML file. I'm going to save it on my desktop, but you're going to use a .php extension. So, um, you know, make sure that it actually is a PHP extension. If you look at my desktop here, you can see the file. that see it's a kind of PHP file and it's not you know like service.php.html or .text or something like that that it actually is a PHP file and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to upload that file to your server now you might have FTP access if you've set that up you can go ahead and log into uh, your FTP for your web server and you can just upload that service.php file However, from the control panel, there's also another way. There's like an on-screen interface for you to do it. Um, I didn't really bother connecting to FTP because I just needed to upload this one file. So I just used file manager in here and I went into the web root. And then through this interface here, you have the ability to upload files through this button here, upload and I just put it here service.php as you can see. So this is the web root um, which is just off of your domain like that. So that would be your domain slash service.php and that's my 
service.php file going into the database, grabbing those two rows, encoding it into JSON, and outputting it onto the screen. Now, if you have some errors in your PHP file, you will, if you, and you try to hit your PHP file, you're going to see the error message here instead. And you might even see some of the PHP code. So that's why it's best if you, you know, don't actually put your credentials in this PHP file, just in case that somehow that code can get revealed. Um, instead, you know, you would put it in a separate config file and you would not put that config file in the web root of your server either. You'd probably put it in some uh, folder that can only be accessed by the PHP file and not through the browser like this. Anyways, in this demo, um, I wasn't concerned about the best practices or making this web service secure. Now that we have our PHP web service reading from the database, we can now work on the client app. Now in the next lesson, we're going to start that Xcode project um, that is going to hit this URL and parse this JSON so we can use that data to display it on a map. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.